Hi, everybody. Uh, it's Lori with Away Vacations. I'm here today. I have Gary Armstrong with me, and I thought it would be interesting to find out why G Adventures, why they're such an amazing company to travel with. So, Gary, uh, feel free to tell us all about G Adventures. Cool. Thanks, Lori. Thanks uh, for having me. Um, always happy to talk a little bit more about the why behind G Adventures. Um, it's definitely one of the key motivators for me when you know working with this company and, and uh, educating people and letting people know more about all the wonderful things that G Adventures does in the background to make sure that travelers are having a positive impact uh, simply by going on vacation and seeing more of the world. Uh, so what I'll do is, yeah, a quick introduction to G Adventures and uh, G for good. So all those aspects of our organization that make sure that you're having a positive impact just by going and seeing the world. Cool, so I'll start off with, yeah, a quick introduction to the company. So this is uh, Bruce, that's him. He uh, founded the company in 1990 uh, on the back of two personal credit cards. The idea around G Adventures and us as an organization, it really is an entrepreneurial success story for a Canadian business. So Bruce grew up in Calgary uh, and then moved to Toronto to found the company in 1990. And uh, yeah, he took on a whole bunch of personal debts um, and just started running trips because he had an amazing idea of what the travel industry could do and what it could be when it comes to making the world a better place. And so that was Bruce's idea, that one day travel and travelers would save the world, that travel is a fantastic mechanism for wealth redistribution. The industry takes some of the wealthiest people in the wealthiest countries in the world to visit the poorest people in the poorest countries in the world. And so his idea was, why can't more of the money that people are investing in travel, the billions of dollars that are spent on travel every year, why can't more of that money stay in local economies and lead to positive outcomes for the people in those destinations? And there's a number of different ways that G Adventures does this. And uh, I'm going to play a quick video and we just talk and we'll, we'll see if the sound comes through on the video. Um, but this is our ripple score. So this is the newest way that G Adventures is showing our travelers where the money is going that they are spending with us. So the Ripple score is a score that's attached to the vast majority of G Adventures itineraries. You'll see it uh, in the brochures, uh, online as well. Um, and this score shows how much of the in-trip costs are going towards locally owned and operated suppliers. So this was done by a third party. We, uh, we work with a company that audited the entire G Adventures supply chain to find out uh, which local businesses we were using and how often we were using them uh, to generate these scores. So I'll try playing the video and we'll see if the sound continues. Otherwise, what we can do is, is link the video um, at the bottom of this later on as well. So you guys can learn a little bit more about how G Adventures is ensuring transparency around where the money is going when, when uh, we're, we're running our different trips. When you go on vacation, no matter which tour you take, each place you visit requires local expenses, from the hotels to the restaurants, even down to a bike rental. But did you know, with some other types of travel, as little as 10% of that money stays in the community you visit, instead of benefiting the locals, like 90% of those traveler dollars are never there. But what can we do about this? Start keeping score on all of our trips. We work together as one team. You can see the ripple effect beginning in communities spreading the cost of the travel industry. To start, we've done the math for our own trips. Now our tours all have a ripple score to see how well we're keeping those local expenses local. When you see this, you'll know just how often we've chosen local businesses or services to create this tour. If the ripple score is high, you'll know that's a great trip, creating a greater ripple effect to the local and poly destination home. Otherwise, it's still a great trip. We have some work to do to make the local benefit even better. The D Adventures Ripple Spark, our way of helping travelers, local communities, and so everyone wins. So this is just uh, one of the ways that G Adventures is ensuring that our travelers are having a positive impact while they're seeing the world. And so, yeah, the Ripple Score provides that transparency to our travelers to see where the money is going that they're spending with G but it's just one of a number of different projects that G Adventures operates to ensure that you're having a positive impact by seeing the world. So the others are our responsible travel policies. The one that we've had the longest uh, and is best well known is the animal welfare policy with G Adventures. So as an organization, we ensure that there are no elephant rides, no tiger temples, 
no shark baiting and diving, no dolphin experiences on any G Adventures itinerary, no way of interacting with wildlife in a way that is not sustainable or may lead to negative consequences for those animals um, in, 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 in their natural habitats. And so that's one of the responsible travel policies. Uh, most recently, we were the first international travel company to be certified as child safe. And so no way of interacting with you Youth, especially at risk youth on any G adventures itinerary that could lead to negative consequences for those kids. As such, uh, there are no orphanage visits on any G adventures itinerary. Uh, and if you want more information on this, there is a fantastic TED talk that I tend to share um, done by a, a, a lady who actually set up an orphanage in Cambodia and then realized the, the drawbacks of that uh, method of, of um, you know, raising and, and teaching kids. And so, I mean, the responsible travel policies are something that G Adventures does in the background to ensure that we are, um, you know, not in any way negatively impacting the communities, the individuals, or the wildlife and the ecosystem in places that we operate as a business. The other part of G for Good is Planetera. Uh, the Planetera Foundation was founded by Bruce Puntip in 2003. And that's an organization that works in partnership with local organizations and individuals to help them tap into the tourist economy. Um, and so I'll talk a little bit about Planetera. I am a Planetera ambassador at G Adventures. It's the nonprofit wing of the organization. And um, yeah, all of the operation costs of Planetera are funded by G. And that means all of the monies raised for Planetera can go 100% to the projects that Planetera is looking to build. Uh, we had this big goal of launching 50 projects between the year 2015 and 2020 with Planetera. Um, and we've managed to launch 43 in the first three years of that, that goal. And so, you know, Planetera is, is the beating heart of G Adventures. It's the reason that, that we exist as an organization. It's our way of proactively engaging with, with um, yeah, communities around the world and giving them, providing them seed funding to grow businesses that can provide essential services to our travelers and unique experiences. And the one that I, uh, yeah, we call this, it's, it's part of the G for Good program. Um, the one that I like to speak to the most is uh, the Women's Weaving Co-op in Peru. Uh, Peru is my favorite topic of conversation. It's just one of the now 60 plus planetary projects that we have around the world. Um, but Peru is, is, is the number one destination for G Adventures. It's the, the place where the, the, the most travelers with G go to, both internationally, nationally, and, and also travelers from Alberta. And so, you know, we, we have a lot of travelers going there with us. And, and what we did was we partnered with the local community in Kakakoyo uh, and worked with the women there to um, provide an experience to our travelers. So the travelers have the chance to go and learn about the Quechua people and how they live today, learn about the traditional weaving practices that were passed down from their Incan ancestors. And, you know, it's, it's just a great experience, the chance to learn, you know, how these uh, amazing tapestries and things are woven, um, but also, you know, learn about the culture and the history of that community. And so our travelers get a fantastic experience and obviously G Adventures, that, that's included in the cost of, of the vast majority of our Peru itineraries. Uh, and that money goes to support the women in their work that they do there. And that community is now growing. So from going to a place where, you know, previously women were leaving these communities, they were stopping the traditional practices of weaving, moving into Cusco and, and big city centers to get jobs in the travel industry. Now they have the opportunity to preserve their culture, continue to, um, you know, work and live in the places that they do and show our travelers a, fa a fantastic experience as well. And so Planetera, its role is to find these organizations, these individuals, these communities, these indigenous communities, and uh, work with them to ensure that they get the outcomes that they are looking for, to share their history and their knowledge with, with interested travelers from all over the world, um, and do so in a way that is, is benefiting the, the local community. And, and you can really see, when you go and visit Planetera projects around the world, you can see the substantive change in standard of living that this is often able to offer um, to people in these, these rural and remote communities. And so um, that's the reason why we exist as a company. I mean, G Adventures has become the largest uh, small group travel company on the face of the planet. Uh, I feel that it's in part due to Planetera that, you know, um, it shows that doing the right thing can also be doing the profitable thing, that these two ideals aren't mutually exclusive, that, 
you know, you can, you can have a, a, a for-profit business that's partnered with a non-profit business and the two can work in tandem um, to provide, you know, really unique experiences to travelers around the world and, and show those people how just by going on vacation, they are having a positive impact. That if you are a charitable person, that's fantastic. If you donate, that's great. But you don't have to. You just need to go on vacation and you can help make the world a little bit better for the people in the communities that you visit around the world. Um, and so that's the, that's the why behind G Adventures. It's, it's the reason why we exist. Um, I, I liken Planetera to uh, the NASA effect. I don't know if people have read the right stuff. Um, you know, that famous story about how a president of the United States went to visit NASA in the late 1960s. And uh, the president's standing there and he starts talking to a gentleman and, you know, he's like, oh, what, what do you do for NASA? And the person turns around and says, well, you know, I, I helped put a man on the moon. And it turns out later on in that day, the, the president found out that that person was the janitor who was mopping the floors at the end of the day. And the whole idea is that, you know, it didn't matter who you were at NASA in the late 1960s. It doesn't matter if you were the janitor, you know, cleaning the toilets, emptying the waste paper bins. It didn't matter if you were the ladies crunching the numbers or if you were the astronauts or the, the CEO of that organization. At the end of the day, everybody had that one singular goal, and that was to get a man on the moon before the end of the decade. And, you know, when you talk to people at G Adventures uh, and you ask them what they do for a living, they're going to talk to you about the power of travel and tourism. They're going to talk to you about Planetera, about the projects that we have around the world and how it is their job to make the world a little bit better um, by, you know, having people travel with G and, and um, show them the world and experience the, the positive impact that travel can have. Uh, so that's a, a quick intro as to the why. Uh, I tend to have to talk a little bit about the how as well, the, you know, how do we do what we do on G Adventures trips. Um, and at G, we do have, you know, small group trips, small group travel. And often when people think of small group trips, they think of, you know, pictures like this, thousands of people getting off of cruise ships, hundreds of people getting off of coaches. This isn't what we do at G Adventures. Uh, what we do is small group trips. So trips that uh, average 10 to 12 people, they max at 16 and they give you that opportunity to get to know the other people that you are traveling with and to share those experiences as a small group. And you're not waiting, you know, for 20 minutes for everybody to get off the bus and get their things together. There is no person with a flag and a large microphone, you know, you know, broadcasting to everybody, you know, what they're seeing and what they're doing. It's a very much more intimate and unique way of uh, visiting different sites and, and exploring a destination. And uh, a little bit about the, you know, the number of travelers that we have traveling with us and where they're from. We have people from all over the world traveling with G. We are the world's largest supplier of small group travel now. Over 200,000 travelers from 160 countries traveling with us uh, and over 700 itineraries. So uh, lots of different places to travel to, lots of uh, different age ranges of the people that are traveling to these different destinations with us. Um, and then, you know, the top destinations for us around the world as well. Uh, we tend to find that women are far more adventurous than men. We have 63% of our travelers are women, 37% uh, men. And so, um, you know, it, it seems like the guys are happy to go and, and watch the game uh, or, or whatever it happens to be. Uh, whereas the women are like, no, we want to go to Peru. We want to hike the Inca Trail. We want to go to the Amazon jungle. We want to see the world and, and experience it. Um, and as such, you know, we don't have single supplements on our itineraries. Uh, and so a large number of those female travelers are solo female travelers you know, people taking trips and, and meeting new people along the way. Um, people are in the same boat as they are uh, when, they're, when they're taking these adventures around the world. And then finally, we don't break our trips down by destination. We do it by style of travel. Uh, and I wanted to briefly mention this because I know that Laurie's putting together an itinerary with us to Peru, and it's one of our national geographic journeys. And so there's a number of different ways of seeing the world with G Adventures, everything from assisted backpacking trips for 18 to 39 year olds, um, up to the National Geographic travel style, which is the most comfortable way of traveling with G Adventures, and it is the most cost-effective way of traveling with Nat Geo. Uh, and so, you know, a lot of upgraded accommodation throughout these itineraries, uh, but the real value of the National Geographic travel style uh, and these itineraries is access to additional subject matter experts while you're traveling on these trips and more educational content that we're able to provide throughout those journeys. And so when you're in Peru with us on a Nat Geo Journeys trip, you actually visit the uh, planetarium just outside of Cusco and do some stargazing. Uh, I've had the good fortune of actually going on that, uh, that trip and 
um, yeah, experiencing the, uh, the, the Cusco Planetarium. And it was a real highlight. I thought I knew a lot about the Inca and their relationship to uh, the night sky and uh, the whole reason of the naming of the Sacred Valley. But it, it just an amazing group of people and a real great educational experience while I was there. Um, and that, you know, on top of uh, the planetary projects that you're visiting along the way. And then we had an additional guide. So we had our local CEO, um, our knowledgeable uh, guide while we were there. But then when we were visiting Pizak and Oleite Tambo, and then also Machu Picchu, we had an additional uh, expert there with us, a, um, you know, uh, an academic in, 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 in the history of those Incan sites and the Incan people and just, just an amazing source of information um, for us on all, on all things G-Adventures. So I'll leave it with a teaser for the group that Laurie is putting together, this Nat Geo Journeys, uh, Machu Picchu in the Amazon, the 10-day uh, the itinerary that she's working on. Um, but thank you so much for you know, spending a bit of time with me to learn a bit more about the why behind G-Adventures, Planetera and g for good and a little bit about how we do what we do as well. Thanks so much, Gary. That was great. Um, like Gary said, I am putting together an itinerary to Peru for this year in August. Stay tuned. We will have a video coming very soon, giving you a brief outline of the journey and what you're going to expect on the tour and some perhaps some added benefits. Thanks again, Gary. Thanks, Laurie.